Hey, 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 Superior Shea fans and other humans, how are you doing today? Uh, I wish to introduce you to a new shaving soap from my favorite vendor that we deal with, Zart Gafu. So uh, this is the new version of the shaving soap. Uh, it is in the same container as the old one. Um, bless her heart, she delivers them in this paper. I don't know why. And uh, I believe the base is exactly the same as the tried and true beloved uh, Ziegenbart. You can see the Ziegenbart here. So the new version, same container, same amount of soap, is called Prince Charming, which is the name that she uses for her wonderful um, aftershave balm. So generally in Zarkofu land, the name will correspond with the concoction of essential oils that she uses for her fragrance. She never uses perfume oils. She only uses essential oils. And um, I may say the lady is quite talented in the subtlety and depth of the scents that you get. Uh, you know, I, I prefer essential oils to fragrance oils, but I would concede that they usually lack amplitude and complexity versus a talented fragrance perfumer. Um, I would say that uh, these do not have the amplitude of a good fragrance one, but the depth is very close to the best of fragrance oils, and of course it has that deadly accuracy of a good essential oil product. So first of all, what I like right away is she cured them in the tin. So we've sold Ziegenbart for three and a half years. It is a very popular item that we have. And it has always in that time, you know, she makes the sheet of soap and then she takes a circular thing, cores out with an apple core and, and puts it in there like that. I can't recall, I can't recall seeing it where it was poured hot into the thing. So finally, uh, we have that large advantage where the good juice will not be lost along the sides of the tiny reservoir. Uh, keeping with the German and European mindset, uh, it's not a very large thing. It's about 2.4 inches across or something like that. But uh, it's a very dense soap and the longevity is great on it. Um, uh, and I, when I say it's hot poured, I use that relatively speaking. Uh, she did have a long conversation with me uh, when I met her last year and she told me at what temperature the saponification occurs for her soap. It is exceedingly low. Uh, in fact, uh, you can't really get it lower to make soap, and that is why the pH of this soap is just 8.5, which is, this is fully saponified. They didn't add anything later to reduce the pH and bring it closer to seven. And it's 8.5, which, um, it's not an easy soap to use. I've made many videos, as you know, but I really think uh, if all you care about or all you value the most of your soap is how soft your face will feel when you're done, I don't think I've ever used anything that's as good as this. I've used things that are easier to use, or make more volume, or make more cushion, or smell more entertaining, all of those things. Um, but if the one criteria is post face feel after the shave, I truly feel that this is an unsurpassed product on planet Earth. Um, as to the new scent, Prince Charming. Well, it doesn't really smell like the Prince Charming balm to me. That smells more like, um, this smells like fine, fine French talcum powder with maybe this, the teeniest hint of lavender. This shaving soap, it is a citrusy and sandalwood smell. A bright, fresh citrus with a little bit of sandalwood, maybe a little bit of cinnamon. And the old Ziegenbart, not a tremendous difference. It is a slightly more earthy smell on the old Ziegenbart. So we don't have much Ziegenbart at the moment, but I wish to keep both of them so that people can have the option to buy whichever scent they want. Uh, I believe that the character of the uniqueness of the soap due to its low temperature saponification um, will remain the same. Uh, this is a goat's milk soap, so it's not a purely vegan soap. It is palm oil based, but it does use goat's milk also. And uh, the yield of this soap is very good. So I have this little extremely accurate tiny uh, 
tiny resolution or high resolution, tiny range scale. And I have an empty tin from the Ziegen Bart days. So I will uh, weigh this tin. It's not exactly the same literal tin as this one, but I'm sure it's very close. And then I will weigh the, the, full, the full container, and then we'll shave with it once and measure how much was lost, and that'll give us a good idea and cost per pennies what it costs to use this fine soap. And what shall I use to shave with today? I shall use a Dovo razor that I just purchased on eBay for $45. So he's in decent shape, but it's a, a very old Dovo razor, as you can tell by that tang. It looks to be a 4 8 model. That's fine. Not the most hollow thing in the world. Maybe I paid a little bit too much for 45 bucks, but it's not exactly easy to get a, a very old stamped tang Dovo, and I guess I collect them a little bit, stupid as that is. And um, I am going to take it over to the honing station, and I will start with a soft Arkansas that I have convexed, as you've seen in my other videos, and then I will go to the hard Arkansas, and then I will go to the black Arkansas, and after doing that for a while, I will strop, and then set up all this crap with the camera in the bathroom there, and shave using this fine thing with a resident store brush, the cold water that we have here, and the new Zarkaful Prince Charming. Okay, let's go home for a little bit. This is just a snippet. So far it's taken four minutes of my undivided attention. As is so often the case, it just looks at this point from watching the water that um, the heel needs a little bit of work. So I just got to try to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to angle this down a little bit so that the, the juice comes toward the heel better. And I'm pausing to take a look. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a smile. It should be a good shaver though. Now I'm getting a nice stroke on the on the heel. Okay, I don't want to take away too much of this little razor. I'm seeing cuts that I made across the entire span, looking like they're going right to the terminus. So I shall switch to the bigger stall. And I'm sure you've seen this stuff quite a bit, so we'll just chop this thing up and show a couple of highlights, maybe. Hey Superior Shave fans, it's been 12 minutes of my undivided attention and uh, I feel like I'm ready to go to the final finishing stone. So let's put 30 seconds worth of this crap in here and then we'll show you the next step. Hey Superior Shave fans, we're back. Uh, it's been 17 and a half minutes of my undivided attention with this razor. But uh, I feel like the razor is looking pretty damn good. You see right there, a nice little bubble. So, the final step before the strop is something like this. I do like to break out the microscope on something that's coming from an unknown, an unknown edge condition. So um, I prefer a uh, stereo binocular microscope 
because you can see the shape of the edge, which to me is just as important as the scratches on the side, if not more important. And if you get a good one, this one costs 500 bucks, um, it goes up to, uh, what does this go up to? 40, uh, 67 magnification. That's plenty for me to see what I need to see most of the time. So I just need to check that heel to make sure that heel is shaped the way that I want to see. No pitting, no scratches, nothing. So I'm getting a good look now. And the scratches that I see look to be the scratches that I created. And uh, it looks, what's over here? Oh, just a little bit of oil, no problem. I thought it was uh, pitting, but it is not. Well, unfortunately, I do see one little bump that's um, a tiny piece of missing edge, and it's enough there that now I gotta start all over. So, we're at 19 minutes and a half. I'm gonna have to go down to the soft arc and uh, leave this thing open and stay on the soft arc until I can cut enough into that razor. Um, let me get a good look at where it was again. Uh, yes. On the, on the bevel plane with, it's like the right on the very edge, the last 5%, there's just a little missing spot. And um, fortunately, it doesn't go back very far at all. And it isn't in a part on the edge that's more close to the spine on the razor. So should be just a few more minutes, and then I got to go through the, I don't know, 10 more minutes maybe. We'll check back. Hey, Superior Shave fans, we're back. It's uh, 24 minutes exactly since I started messing with this razor. So, bit of a setback there. That is why I do not hone for hire because you never know what you're going to get. But I just put in two minutes or something and let's see if I got behind that spot. So I'm just checking on the razor to see if um, what I'm seeing is paper towel. Okay, I found the spot. There is the teeniest, teeniest, teeniest little bit of whatever was there left. So maybe like one more minute on the uh, soft arc. We're back again. I went back for a second round to try to get that little tiny bump off. It's at 26 minutes and 20 seconds since we started. Becoming the quagmire that honing an unknown razor always is, oh, that is beautiful. The edge looks exceptional and extremely uniform. It almost looks like you could shave off it just the way it is, of course. You, you shouldn't, but uh, okay. Yes, I, I do not see anything that's going to hurt me. I just see a nice super thin edge on the front. And I shall look on the back now. I see an edge that's in spectacular shape and will refine very easily with the other two arcs. Um, okay, I am definitely going to change those scales because I just closed and bonked into the thing. So let me make sure I didn't hurt the razor when I did that. No, I see a little celluloid on there. Looks like it just chewed it right off of there. That's no problem. I didn't want to keep those scales anyway. So I am going to hit the other two arcs for, what is it, 27 minutes and a half? Probably another 10 minutes. So getting to be a quagmire, isn't it? 40 minutes of my undivided attention on this day. Well, what are you going to do? We're back, Superior Shave fans. It's 32 minutes and 30 seconds since I began messing with this razor. So um, it had that one little divot on the edge that I didn't notice originally. I am just through using all three of the Arkansas stones, and I just want to take a look here to make sure that, oh, it looks spectacular. So it, the, the shape and the scratches look beautifully pristine, and I'm just making sure there's no funny bumps anywhere, and then I shall strop and shave with it. Looks 
great. Looks very, very good. Funny, as old as this is, at the heel, you can see the old scratches from Dovo where they, you know how they set on that wheel, which is flat, by the way, but being a wheel, the outside of the wheel is moving faster than the inside, and you always get some wavy lines down at the bottom. And I could just barely see them a little bit on the non-show side. No real point in removing them, though. It doesn't affect anything except your pride. Now we shall stop and check. I'm going to see, the same way as always, what kind of arm haircut and action I get. I get beautiful, silent, just a magic division. Just a magic division. Let's see, can we get that on camera? Let's try. Oh, you know what? Let's face it that way. Sure. Can you see that? Sure. They're just coming off and not making any noise, but I don't want to give it too much praise because it's a little bit thicker than the current, you know, that's, uh, yeah, now that I think of it, I forgot. You see how there's not that little ridge right there? This means this is a half hollow 4 eighths razor. Anyway, I just wanted something old. Now we're going to shave, so let's get lathered up. Well, isn't this a fun setup? Okay, I've taken the, uh, can you see that? I wrote down with the precise scale. Uh, the empty vessel that's the same weighs 13.84 grams, and this one weighs 134.18, putting approximately 120.34 inside this container. Now we shall use it to shave and measure how much is lost compared to the $16 or whatever it costs, and we'll get the total retail cost per shave, approximately. I am going to keep this all Zarkaful. I have a love and kisses. Don't knock the name till you try it. Actually, you can't try it because uh, we don't have any of this one. It's mildly sweet, but like a... Um, I don't like the sweet stuff normally, but that one's pretty good. Whatever the hell it is. Uh, and then we have the brush. I will use some of this Gold Dodge pre-shave oil and the Zarkaful, and I'm going to go wash my face with the Zarkaful. Be right back. I don't have the glasses on. I don't really need the glasses, except to see what the camera is seeing. Can I show you what's, what's around? The ring light is right around here. Let's see here. Oh, no, my... We have scraps of millimeters of space. I shall need my paper towels at the ready. How about if I try to pan down and show you the ever so fun process of uh, the Ziegenbart. So This is an adventure to, to lather every time. I should get a good idea of the scent this time around, I would think. There goes nothing. Oh, it sounds, sounds like I did a decent job with the water ratio. Deep in the brush, it's too wet, but at the tips, it was good which means I'll have to use more chocolate. The 
the scent. Uh, definitely more citrus than Ziegenbart. Other than that, feels very much the same. It's making a terrific mess. I am ready to try the razor. I'm just trying to beat the excess water out of this knot by submission. I'll be honest, I don't think I've... Uh, one, one, uh, there's a, a 1950s razor called uh, Wiener Shaver from Paul Schulz. It's a shoulderless razor and it's four eighths and it's half hollow. I believe that may be the only other half hollow four eighths I've ever used. So this is an odd razor to my sense. That was hilarious. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to try to put the teeniest couple of drops on the top of this thing. If you don't like fussing with your soap, there's not the soap for you. The soap is all about how you feel afterwards. You will feel good afterwards, I'll tell you that much. I'll show you how. Well, it is having no trouble with the whiskers anywhere. It just feels like a short, thick little razor. It's funny, it's the strangest soap because I've probably used it conservatively 500 times. Um, every now and again, I will get it to be like thick mayonnaise and it stays that way on your face. But this is the one stuff that it doesn't really matter because the pH is so low. My face always feels good afterwards, like nothing else I've ever used. Okay, it looks like the first pass needs to be a little bit better over there, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a couple of these drops in here. I'm using the uh, TV screen on this 10-year-old camera as my mirror. Okay, I'm ready to uh, go across the grain on the top of my face and I just go backwards on the bottom. This part I don't really need to see.
that brush is an Edwin Jagger silver tip, very small, the smallest one. It's a great little knot, but that handle is uncomfortable. That's why I just kept it as a store brush. Yeah, the edge is sharp, but it's a thick little razor, so... Maybe I should have tried to find a really narrow, hollow, wider Dovo. Good luck with that, right? They did make 7 eighths a long time ago. I need a little bit of going this way in the face area and then I'll um, do a backwards one right at the mouth. This part is very much by feel for me. Always has been. Okay, I could feel it get something, so now I'm going to go backwards, the last part for cleanup. I have given up going backwards there. I don't think it's good for my face. To be honest, it's really not good for the corners of my mouth, but that is where hair, if it's there, but it makes me crazy. I'm gonna be right back. A little of the Zarkaful toner, and then the wonderful Prince Charming, and I shall give a grade to my shaving endeavor. Mm. I like to keep my Prince Charming balm in the fridge.
Here it is. It is spectacular. That's more than enough. You want to leave your face wet? I shall give you an honest grade at this point. Let's see here. Okay, over here, B plus to A. Down here, yeah, solid B. There's a little tiny bit left over here, but very, very little. Straight up the middle is uh, A minus. Over here, not so good. C, there's some left over there. Above the jawline over here, excellent. Now around the lips. Uh, it did okay for the backwards pass. I don't feel any irritation, but I didn't get a baby butt smooth. I got close. If I go this direction, I feel nothing. If I go this direction, I feel a little something. And uh, now I'm looking in the camera to see if there's any irritation. A little tiny bit right there, right? Not bad. I'm getting older. Um, the hairs don't like it when you go backwards every time. Such is life. But uh, that was fun, and I hope that you